Hey guys, it's Bub here, and today we'll be benchmarking as well as running real life tests on the 10th generation Intel Core i7 10700K Unlocked. I built a computer using this processor just about two weeks ago, and so far I'm very happy with the results this processor has been giving me. So without any further ado, let's go over the environment this processor will be used in for the benchmarks, as well as the specific specifications of this processor. Now the CPU cooler that will be on this processor during the benchmarks will be this Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 4. Now yes, this is a fan powered cooler. I know some people would rather have an AIO on this, but personally I wanted an air cooler, so I got one. This is extremely quiet and I would highly recommend it to anyone who wants an air cooler. For the motherboard, I also am using a MSI Z490 Gaming Edge Wi-Fi. Let's talk about the specific specifications of this processor. I'm using it at the default 3.8 GHz, which it can be overclocked to 5 GHz. Something Intel has been heavily criticized for is using the 14 nanometer process. I'm not sure what AMD is on, I believe that they're on 7 nanometer. However, for me, this processor runs perfectly fine even with the 14 nanometer process. This processor has 8 cores and 16 threads. It uses the Intel Z490 chipset and also uses a new socket introduced with the 10th generation processors. This processor will not work with LGA 1151 processors, meaning if you have a 9th or 8th generation Intel processor, you're going to need to buy a new motherboard to be able to buy this processor. Now you might be saying, but wait a minute, you haven't shown us what graphics card you're using. This will also be a test on the integrated UHD 630 graphics. I do not have a graphics card in this machine as I am waiting for the RTX 3070 to come out. I need a new computer due to my MacBook Pro slowing down, so I decided to build one before the 3070. So like I said, this benchmark will not only be a test on the raw processor performance, but it will also be testing the UHD 630 integrated graphics. Now, the first test we'll be running is the CPU benchmark on Cinebench R20. Now I'll have HW monitor pulled up on the bottom right of the screen so you can monitor the temperatures of this processor as well as all 8 cores. The multi-core benchmark on Cinebench didn't take that long, I would say it took about 1-2 to two minutes, however we finished with a score of 4856, ranking us 4th on the Cinebench built-in list. Next we're going to run the single core CPU benchmark on Cinebench. This is where stuff got to get slow. This benchmark took around 9 minutes to complete and the CPU also got pretty hot during this, which is shocking because I've never seen the CPU get this hot. After that benchmark finished, we got a score of 498, which ranked us first on the Cinebench built-in list. The maximum temperature we reached while running Cinebench was 158 degrees Fahrenheit, which is more than I thought this processor would reach, however the processor typically idles at 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Another benchmark I decided to run was the user benchmark. Now, looking at the processor performance, we can see that it got an outstanding 98.9%. However, taking a look at the UHD 630 graphics, it got a 6.61%, which was rated terrible. I was definitely expecting this, as the Intel UHD 630 graphics have never been outstanding, but running game benchmarks is where it might surprise you. The first game benchmark we'll be running is the GTA 5 built-in benchmark. This typically ran at around 20 to 25 FPS, which may not seem like a lot. However, if you have some decent settings set up and you have some quality settings set to low slash medium, it's actually kind of playable. While it's still not giving you 60 FPS, which would be ideal in a game like this, it still runs and it's still playable. So I would call this a pass. And yes, you can play this game on this processor with integrated graphics. The next game we'll be testing is Minecraft 1.16 Vanilla. Now, unsurprisingly, this game gives us around 150 to 200 frames per second because Minecraft can run on almost anything. So, taking a look at how it actually performs, we do get some stuttering issues even with 150 FPS, so I do highly recommend turning on VSync. However, something like installing Optifine or using a client like Hyperium may be able to fix that issue. But, like I said, Minecraft doesn't really judge the entire world on benchmarks because it can run on almost anything. Next, we'll be playing the tutorial to Rocket League. So, I didn't actually see a FPS value on the display somewhere, but judging by the gameplay, I can say that it wasn't a smooth 60 FPS, but it was definitely somewhat playable. I wouldn't even call it somewhat playable, I would call this outright playable. It was, it was pretty smooth for the most part, I didn't experience any lagging, and overall this was a great experience playing the game on the UHD 630 integrated graphics. Now, that kind of begs the question, for light gaming, do you really even need a graphics card? 
and generally I would still recommend one. I would still recommend getting a graphics card if you're building something for light gaming, however if your budget can't afford one, or of course can't afford one yet, the UHD 630 graphics on this processor surprisingly runs very well, and I was shocked by the performance that this processor gave me. Now, we can run benchmarks all day and compare scores, but how does this processor actually perform in real day-to-day -day tasks? Well, to be honest with you, it's amazing. I could not have asked for a better processor, and overall, it's very snappy, the system is very responsive, intensive tasks like Premiere Pro run very well, and overall, this is a great processor. Even with UHD graphics like I just showed you, some games are playable, although not at 60 frames per second. Personally, I have not seen my CPU usage go over 50%, even with an intense virtual machine running. Now, let's talk about what I intended this computer to be for, virtualization. I wanted a big 2TB hard drive, and I wanted a good processor to be able to virtualize applications. And so, running Windows 10 in VMware Workstation Pro 15, I experienced absolutely no lag, and if, I got, and if I could get rid of that little white bar at the top of the screen, I genuinely believe that you could trick someone into believing they're using a real computer. Now, a big downside of using a 10th generation Intel processor is that there is no PCIe 4 support. So that new shiny RTX 3080 cannot be fully utilized by this processor. However, Nvidia did say that their RTX 30 series will work perfectly fine with PCIe 3, which is what this processor uses. This processor can support a maximum of 128GB of RAM, which in my opinion is way more than an average person would even need. Overall, this is a great processor. It could cost less to really compete with AMD's Ryzen series, but if you can afford it, I would personally buy this processor. Well, yes, Intel is technically behind with the 14 nanometer process. It runs perfectly fine, and I have not run into any instances where it's a burden. The 10700K is said to be a very hot chip, but I haven't r ran into any instances where it got over 125 degrees Fahrenheit, unless it was in that one benchmark. When I was building my computer, I did ask for a lot of advice all over the internet, and some people said that the i5-10600K is said to be a good, cheaper alternative to the 700K. However, it does have 6 cores and 12 threads, but it is significantly cheaper than the 10700K. The i9-10850K is $90 more, and would obviously offer better performance as it does have 2 more cores, however for most people, the 10700K is more than fine for them especially with those UHD 630 graphics, which absolutely blew me out of the water the first time that I tried to play a game on them. I was not expecting this good of a performance boost. Anyway guys, that wraps up this video. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe if you're new around here, and go watch my PC building video if you have not seen that yet. And with that being said, thank you for watching, and I will hopefully see you all in the next one.